All right, good morning, Norwich 93 CMP. Well, it's morning for me anyway, but I'm getting a lot of people ask me about well, how to fill out the M1 Garand data sheet. So here we're gonna go, we're gonna go right into it. Uh, a little bit different than the carbine. They want stuff written out a little bit more. Uh, obviously serial number manufacturer, easy do it. It's not like the um, carbine. Rifle type, obviously M1, M1C, M1D, national matches. Original, I recommend leaving that blank for now. Go through the rifle, then make a determination later on. Right here, looking at the receiver, this little area, they want to know if it's curved or if it's flat. And I got a couple examples. Let's see. See, that's flat right there. Draw it. Any of the marks that are on there like that, rebuild marks, sometimes they're electro penciled, sometimes they're uh, um, with a grease marker or sometimes they're stamped they could be on this leg i've seen stamps uh, up in this area too for rebuild marks uh, look in the opposite legs also look underneath for marks on the receiver um, by the heel all right um, i want to talk about the receiver cut also sorry about that let's see if i can get this one to move of course, I can't get it to move. Stand by. There we go. All right. So that right up in here. This is an earlier version where my thumb is. It's like a semicircle. Some of them are straight. I want to talk about the muzzle erosion and the throat erosion. This is a throat erosion gauge. When you use them, you're gonna measure air off to the top. That's where you're gonna get your reading from. This happens to be a four, a little less than a four. That's how you read it with a clean chamber. Muzzle erosion, that's the one that says ME on it. Excuse me, MW, muzzle wear. Throat erosion, muzzle wear, right in here, okay? Um, if you have to draw something or write something out for your finish, write it out in the sides. That's why they give you this extra space to do those kinds of things in it. Um, we just talked about throat erosion and muzzle wear. It's everything with being clean. Then take your measurements. I use the CMP gauges when I'm working on them. Um, if you can take the rear handguard off, go ahead. If not, if it's an original gun, I would leave it alone, but there's markings in the top for the part numbers. Also to note if it's readable from the left side of the rifle or from the right side of the rifle. Yes, they do change. Get all the marks on there. You see there's a couple punch marks. There's the commercial proof, WP in the oval. Look around for any other type of marks. There's something there, some hieroglyphics. And is the chamber in the white? They want to know that. Another thing to look at is the pads. Are the pads chromed? These are called the pads. This one's not chromed. There's also a certain length. Earlier stuff are shorter than later, uh, than later rifles. The one on the left happens to be a chromed pad. The one on the right you can see is a lot longer pad. See how it comes down way down here? That's a long pad. Talk about the crowns. If you got to denote anything about the crowns. I think one of these is readable on the right hand. Okay. This one's readable on the right hand side. See how it, we can see it nicely? It's got an M and also has a partial flaming bomb. Put that on the paper also. Talk about the color of the outside of the barrel. Is it refinished or not? Rear sights, aperture. So these are the apertures we're talking about. This one here is a Springfield. This little area right here, this looks like a almost like a nice angled cut. This is indicative of everybody but Winchester. This one has tracks left and right of the splines cut in. See how this aperture is shaped on a uh, nice slope. 
That's indicative of Winchester. This one doesn't have any tracks on it. See how it's solid right there? Winchester's usually had a, a punch mark right there. And this just could be a later one. A little bit of a curve to it, not much, but with tracks. Covers, are they marked or not? Do they have a punch mark? How big is the ribbing? What color are they? To note that. The base themselves, if you look at the angle that I'm going on, right to the bottom right of my finger, right there, that's that's a nice angled one. Look at the one down below, that's a Winchester. It's got a punch mark next to it on the outer left ear. It's arc, that's a Winchester. You can tell by the chatter marks too. Usually is a Winchester. Early stuff were part marked on the very bottom but that's only for a C code. If it's C with a number, that's gas trap type stuff. If it's something else, it could be late M14 parts. Concentric circles is another set of cut circles deeper inside this rear sight base. So if you ever hear concentric circles, that's what they're referring to. The pinion itself, there's a few different types of pinions and sometimes there's different threads for different ends. Some of them were cut in the middle like right there and there. Some of them see the splines go all the way, don't go through here from the, from the cut. And there's ones without any cuts whatsoever. These are lock bars. Lock bars come in a, a couple different types. This one's, a, let me see what this one is. This one's actually curved. So this is an earlier lock bar. The top of that is not a right angle. This is a later lock bar. It's straight across the top. Up here we're talking about. So elevation and windage, we're talking about arrows. These are closed arrows. It's like a uh, filled in V versus on this cap, elevation cap. This is a Winchester, it's opened. so like it can hold water. Screw is very different. Doesn't look like this shape to hold your cap on. It's probably wrong. All World War II goes up to 1200 in its yards. If you have a later type um, rear sight and then you're rolling on it, see it says 1100. There is no 1200, that's a 200. And then it's got an M on it, that's an M14. That's for meters. Don't use it if you can help it. Look for part markings. It could be very small on these faces. Um, this is a Winchester, so they're asking about the pinion. Is it marked? There's a marking, it's a T. This one happens to be a T. But that's where the mark would be underneath the cap. Elevation, I we talked about those. Okay. Front sights. So let's talk about this. Actually, I'm sorry. Let's go here first. So that's the bushing, and this is the spring for that. I've seen one of these springs actually in my clip watch from CMP once. So whatever country they got them from, got them switched up. This is a very hard part to find, and usually reproductions are pretty poor. But you see the two little. Uh, nipples on there well that's what engages the lock bar if you look down in the hole you'll see in the left hand side from like the 10 o'clock to the 8 o'clock is a straight line that's there's, there's a bend in there to the side actually you can see good from here too see that bend right there that's what it's supposed to be like you'll see how nicely machined that is all the reproductions are crushed and they usually work like shit and they spin and everything else this is a legit one Front sights, so the earlier front sight screw is this one where it's got a bevel to it because a seal went on top of it to cover it. Inside is where you can find markings. Oh, this one's marked with an A. Sometimes, you know, used for Winchester. That's what they say, but they probably were used in Springfield too. That's the early version. Then you went to the next one, which is smooth sides, so they didn't have the seal on them. Does it have a mark on the inside? Yes or no? And then some late replacement stuff had the neurals to it. Now, I like this little gauge I got from CMP in determining the width of the sight ears. So we have two sights here. First one's a Springfield. And basically, there's actually, it's a really tight Springfield. But when I go to the Winchester, it goes on almost just, just right. 
sorry about that, just right for the Winchester. All right, so wider ears, the widest ears was Harvester, thinnest was Springfield, second widest was uh, Winchester, and then H&R was a little bit, little bit bigger than uh, Springfield. Uh, some of them were marked with a punch mark. There's one right there. Denote that on there too, what color it is. You can also look at the smash marks on it. You should write stuff down like that. If the seal's broken, the seal could be there, but it could be broken. Or it's just missing a seal and still be, you know, possibly be original. Um, going right down the trigger housings. This is the small hole that they're talking about versus the clover leaf. That's a clover leaf. This has an early trigger in it. It's, look inside that hole. It's got another hole in the trigger. See it? That's an early trigger. That is an unmodified large pad. Here's a modified pad. You can see where the bridge port or whatever machining came in and took off the, the thickness of the pad. And then obviously it's refinished. Winchester's normally had a lot of marks on them. There, over here, I've also seen them on the tops here and sometimes on the face. Not much on the face, but on the top, definitely in there, and sometimes on the inside. Later stuff, so this is what we call like a 65 series. Um, had it was made to be a thin pad. You notice the safety here, it's got a curved top to it. This has markings on the right, they can have on the right or the left hand sides, and it has a hole in it. Some of the earlier safeties were flat topped. Like this one's an early Winchester one, it's flat topped, marked on the right side and the upper arm. Different markings. Those are your safeties. Hammers, early hammers, so they're actually asking about the early um, uh, tooling hole. Be careful about how you put down the numbers. Always do C with a space, maybe an underline, something something bold. You can write the you know space underneath it and then write the numbers out. If there's gaps in it, put the gap. If there's no gaps, put them tight to each other because it does have different meanings. Uh, a lot of them uh, mid-war and later were marked on the face. Be careful for M14 hammers. This is an early Winchester hammer. If you notice, it's C4, C-4. This is a late hammer, 2.5 millions in Win 13s. So just be careful on how you uh, write wordings down. This is two or Springfield Armory, and you can see that the casting marks are in the triggers. That's how you tell they're Springfield Armory. This is the disconnector. You notice that the disconnector is all flat on these three. And this one's protruding far out. That's an M14 hammer. You cannot put that inside an M1 Grand. Though the trigger itself is, is the same, the disconnector is not, and it will not physically fit in without hitting your stock on the way in. Um, you can put an M1 Grand trigger in an M14 type, type rifle. So just be careful about that extra little notch on there. Trigger guards, milled trigger guards, has this piece on it. That's all World War II and pre-production. If it's very thick and has another cut little circle just dished into here, that's concentric circles, that's like gas traps. Most of the markings, if I can focus, are on the front here. Springfield Army early stuff was marked in that same spot. And I got these Winchesters out there just to show you the they call these bevels on the sides. Always do your part numbers, like I said, with the spaces or no spaces. This one doesn't have any spaces at all. Um, this is a stamped version. I just want to show you how this, it's called the hook and it's milled. Yeah. See how it's milled out right there and it has a nice sharp hook. All right, so that was mid-war for Springfield. There's tabs that were made See how that one is? That's just bent by a machine, and that's it. It's not milled out to make a nice sharp hook. That was the latest type of uh, version. Um, this is Springfield Armory. So just because it's not marked, I know it's Springfield Armory because it doesn't have a Winchester mark, but there's also a couple other things. And one of them is this. Sometimes they're marked on the inside and the bottom. 
So just be careful. Look around. Usually that's actually a very large one. I've seen partials and probably about half that size in there before. Um, right here, this pattern of a cut right in here um, is also indicative of certain manufacturers. If you have to draw it, draw it out if you don't know how to identify it for which, which company. All right, so that basically takes us through the trigger housing. Also, don't forget to denote the colors of the trigger housing. Um, look all over for marks. Um, going on, let's go spring. Ah, okay, yes. So let's talk about the hammer plungers. Early is winged. These ones are later. Now, if you look really close, see how these are, edges are square right here? On this side, these are actually routed a little bit. I can't get it to focus, but it's a it's a gentle curve to it. See the gentle curve? Usually indicative. Write it down. Is it in the white? Are they parkerized? Are they re refinished black? The hammer spring housing. These cuts here are squared off. This one's squared off the top, that's earlier. This one's rounded, well guess what, that's later. Spring, no change. That's everything for the trigger housing. Now we're gonna go to some of the stocks. So let's just keep bringing stocks out and I'll show you what I have. So look around for marks, cartouches, any rebuild marks. This is the inside of the pistol grip. This is the bottom of the pistol grip. Anything underneath on the butt, what's the shape? Over here, this one's been sanded down. It's got a little, like almost a lip to it. Well, if you keep going up, you're gonna find some numbers in it. Are there numbers? What is the number? Those are Julian dates for International Harvester stocks. They may want the length of the barrel channel from here forward. Look on the left-hand side, are there any cartouches? Are there any rebuild marks? What's on the inside of the pistol grip? What's at the bottom of the pistol grip? Okay. Now that happens to be a late harvester stock. Let's grab something else. Springfield Armory, World War II. You can see that it had a grenade launcher. Look for the holes over there. Legit, that's a cartouche. This is an ordnance wheel. Sometimes it, people, you know, as their cartouches, they sometimes mean both. Is there pins or anything in the, in the stock? Circle P, this one's serif. It's got little flags off the P. Are there sand serif? Is there a circle? Is there no circle? This cut here for the trigger housing is kind of flat. That's indicative of everyone but Winchester. Anything at the bottom of the pistol grip? Yeah, there is. There's a little small um, ordnance wheel at the bottom of the pistol grip. This one has a rebuild mark. SA with a T on it. Some Springfield Armory had marks in the under the butt plate, are there marks? What's the size of these holes here? Is it routed out for a uh, trap door butt plate style? You gotta annotate all these things. Check for pins up in here and cracks. Let's see what else we got stock wise. Yeah, see this one here? This one's a gentle curve, there's no it's very thick, 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 and just gently just comes around the corner. H and R early. Uh, they call these rack marks. Sometimes Winchesters have marks at the top underneath the furls. Check underneath there also. If you can't get the furl off, just leave it alone. Don't don't go in and and, and ruin some things. We, we talk about the barrel bands in a minute. I'm going to tell you why. Don't go and check off what's original, what's not original, because if you take everything apart, you make it suspect. And what I'm talking about is this. So these are the barrel bands. When we do barrel bands and they're in place, we look at them and we're gonna look at the pins themselves. So when you're looking at the pins, the one on the left is early, it's a solid pin. This is a roll pin. This is later, early, late. If this pin, gets knocked out and you mar up all in here, taking it out, people are gonna see that. So if it's solid and looks like it was never out, 
don't remove it to look underneath the handguard. Leave it alone, just leave it in place. I don't have the earliest one where there's a groove cut in here. This is a Winchester. This is arched and you can see the chatter marks going across the top. The best way that I can show you to tell if things are arched or not is put it on a piece of metal that's straight and rock it. It's gonna roll across it nicely, not make any noise. It's not, there's no stoppages. But yet if I grab a flat profile one and I put it down, can you hear that? That's how you tell the difference if you can't do it by sight. This is a brazed one. This is a, a single milled one. The brazed ones you can kind of tell sometimes when you look at them. Actually, you see it there. Sometimes you can see that there's a little line right there. That's the outer edge being brazed on it. All right. Moving along, stock, we talked about it. The furl itself, early and late furls. Obviously look for a part marking. This is an early milled one. See how the bottom portion is tight right here? And this is gonna make a different mark on your stock than the other styles. What kind is, what's the staking look like on, this, on the side of the screw? Is there a hole in here or not? This is one piece, this is a Winchester. This is a brazed one. See how wide it is here? Well, that's going to be indicative on your, usually your stock too. See the semicircle? Write it down the way it looks. There's a T and a six on this one. This is also Winchester. But you can see it's brazed. It's a couple of pieces right there. You can see the little tab in there. See the tab? And it's brazed together. They're also talking about no hole, small hole, and large hole, and I've seen both of these with the little holes that are off center. You can write that down too. You actually can see the line right there being brazed together, but that's what they're asking about also. All right, so those are the stock furls. Let's go to the rear hand guards. So the rear hand guards could be marked on the inside. Uh, they're also looking over here. This is machine cut for the clearance of the op rod. The earlier ones were not. It was solid, it was straight across, but a lot of them got nailed by the op rods themselves and it crushed it kind of like this okay or a soldier might cut them out because it was hitting and it would do things like this split them because of the, the trauma to it uh is there any markings in here what's this angle over here they're talking about um some of the markings are way over here you got to look for them that's the rear hand guard front hand guard towards the front of the rifle you had a couple of different uh, variations. You had some that were part marked. If you look inside, the one on the right has no holes in it. That's earlier. The one on the left is later. Well, it's even later is that some of these actually have a step in that metal closer towards that, that hole. That's later and replacement type stuff. Is there any part markings? Yes or no? Write it down. The rear hand guard clip, the same thing that I had said earlier. So this one's arched, Winchester, and you can see the chatter marks on it. You roll it on the metal, you won't hear anything. This happens to be a Winchester later stamp version, but it has a punch mark in there. Of course I can't focus, but look for punch marks. Their holes were a different size too, but there's a punch mark in there someplace. It's kind of hard to see it through, a, through the camera. All right, so we did basically almost all the stock set, except for, yeah, we'll go right to the butt plates. We'll stay with the butt plates. So screws, you have an early screw on the left, straight cut, straight down, could be part mark numbered. This one's got a taper to it, a larger like, like head on it. That's later, shouldn't have any part numbers on that. Butt plates themselves. This square area right here, this plunger is cut off square. See how it's cut off square? Some of them are, are rounded, that's later. This trap door right below it, on the other side it's marked. It's the only markings that I know of. And that's it. You can do the patterns, you can talk about the patterns if you want, if they're raised, if this whole checking area is totally raised. And that's the last for the, basically the stock set. 
So if you have a sniper variation, what they're looking for is what type do you have? So here I have a M1D reproduction mount, but look, I have numbers on the actual mount. If you can take this off and underneath your barrel should have a different part number than those other barrels that I showed you if you want a legit uh, M1D sniper mount in the barrel, okay? So just be careful with that. A lot of people will get those kits and they'll slide on the sleeve and everything else and say it's an M1D and you look at the part number in the top of the barrel and it shows that it's a M normal M1 barrel. So just be careful with that, all right? If there's uh, bases, describe the base, colors, if there's any markings, the rings, the size of the rings, uh, scope name, serial numbers, if there's a cheek pad in the stock, is there holes for the cheek pad in the stock? All right, what else? Bolts, all right, bolts. Early bolt, no hole in the bottom. Later bolts had holes, okay? That's basically it. This is an M1 Garand ejection, okay? Hold on, I got myself wondering now. But look, it doesn't fit, yeah? Because this will fool you. Just because you go look at these and somebody's selling them, be careful they're not for the M14. The longer ones for the M14, pretty surprising, but it is. The shorter one is the one that goes for the M1 Grands, okay? So just be careful. A little trick there for you. Um, the earlier ones were totally rounded. Then they went to this half moon cut. No chrome, chrome tip, later stuff. Extractors, this extractor actually has punch mark on it put down the punch mark what's the finish it's parkerized or is it uh blued all right now we're going into i believe the gas cylinders the bolt gas cylinders all right look at the staking for the swivel what does the staking look like are there any marks on the bottom and the bayonet lug these both of these happen to be um later with a wide base see how the front sight is actually sitting there but it's got edges to it on left and the right that's a wide base narrow base it takes up the exact same space as the as the site okay this one has a diagonal cut to it some went straight across this just you know write that down if you have a gauge you can gauge them winchester's had in the back here see how that's not flat compared to the Springfield it's it's like ground over this one's flat that's everybody else but Winchester be careful Koreans made one that was similar to this later on and it's missing some indicative cuts up in the front up here all right gas cylinder lock screws early we got this what's called a single slot. This one's got a camphor face on it. It's got a bunch of circles on it, okay? It's solid. Then they went to this poppet valve one. Well, they had, there's one in between, but I'm not gonna discuss that. Look at the face. How many marks does it have on it, okay? It's made for grenade launching. Two early gas locks. The one on the left is, is Winchester. The one on the right is Springfield. Look at the, the difference of the metalwork. See all those lines? See there's no lines here? This top bevel up here is different from this one. Look at all those marks on the sides here. See the bevel? Then they went to this one. It's got an M on it, modified. And that was for grenade launchers, so it was hardened. The face here is now squared off. There is no bevel. Be careful. These are rock hard, those things. Then they went to the ones with a hump on it. So it had, basically, you can tell the difference between um, the earlier stuff, modified and unmodified. This is for grenade launchers. This one here on the left is like Springfield and HRA, or this one's probably uh, IHC. The base and the corners are a lot wider. If you put these back to back, your finger will catch on this one here, okay? The stacking swivel. Uh, just look at how the screw is, if it's upset, if it's broken. All right, now we're going to go inside the guts 
Um, well, you're gonna go through the follower first. All right, so here's a few followers. There's the, the hi-hat one. It's got, this is totally different. And then the angles um, are different on the follower slide itself. Then I went to a different version, later version, basically stayed the whole time. This is a sans serif one. There's serif ones, supposedly this goes on a, a, a Win 13. There were some marks for the IHCs, sometimes right here, letter codes. Follower, bullet guides, okay. So early to the latest. So see the window here, it's narrow. See how this one's wide, big cut wide. This one's also part marked. Where is it marked? Up on the top, right there. Okay, forged, forged, not marked. Forged, still, these are, actually, I'm sorry. These are marked, these are Winchester. They say CM and A on it. Here's a Springfield one, forged. Notice that this difference at the bottom than the other ones. They don't have that, like that cone looking thing. Some of them had marks on the top. Uh, this one does it. Then they went to one, here's one with marks on it, Springfield. And then on the corners, they got little dents on the left and the right side at the bends. That's still forged. These are stamped and put together. You notice there's a little fingernail cut off onto the side. The metal over here was folded. See the fold line? And they were brazed together. This at the bottom's got a square. This one's called a Starburst. That's International Harvester. We're talking about the Starburst. Hop rod catches early, long, thin wings. Then they got the shorter ones with the ramps on them. That's later, earlier. These cuts right here. See how they're big scallop in there? That's indicative of Winchester. The flatter they are, uh, the more likely they are Springfield. Some early ones had on the accelerator right there, an O right there in the middle. And that O was, was early. They changed some of the shapes of them. Some of them are, are marked, like this harvester is marked with a G on the back side. See how these cuts are flatter? Look how flat this one is for International Harvester. Follower arms, early, marked. This one's marked with a six. That's a little, probably a little later for Winchester. They're talking about the bevels right here. What does a bevel look like? That one has one. I have one that has two of them. See how there's a big bevel right there? Winchester. Then you got later ones. Actually, I'm going to bring these two later ones. These two late ones are flat straight across. There is no bevel. I'm trying to get them with one hand here. Now I just want to show you. It's not going to cooperate, of course. Why would it? It's only a video. There we go, there we go. Sorry, you're wasting your time here. All right, screw it, do one at a time. The bottom of these holes, right where I'm putting my thumb on the bottom, is squared off. This one is not. See how they're rounded? If I put it on that piece of metal, I can rock it back and forth, basically. Just annotate that if you got it. Follower rods themselves, short fork. Why? Because the height from the bottom of the dish to the tips was shorter than the long fork. These are long forks. This is a short fork. This is milled. This is one piece of steel. Count the number of ridges here. Is it marked? Uh, there's a mark on it someplace. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right there, A. These aren't marked. This one, though, has two big dents to it. Usually it's indicative of International Harvester. We talked about the pins, clip latches. So earlier clip latches had a rounded nose on it. It's one piece of, of metal. This one's unmarked anywhere. This, I believe, is a... What is this one? All right, so this is Springfield Armory. See the, see the casting numbers? And it was drilled through. A more square face later on. This is a Winchester. This one has a CM on it, I think. 
on the bottom. Be careful. Look for them. Rounded nose. This is a harvester. Different. On the back, this one's got an E on it. Semi-rounded. Very little. So that's a harvester. Those are clip latches. Look around for the clip latches. All right. What else we got to do? Lower bands. We talked about the lower band already. Clip on. Op rod. Op rods. So this cut they're talking about here, there is none. It's 90 degrees, uncut. That's a World War II one that was just like the first one I just showed you with a cut made later on. It's a small, thin radius. The later ones had a lot larger semicircle in there and usually that semicircle would not go down into the part number. Some of these did um, later on, so be careful. This is a slant cut. On the sides, from the top to the bottom, is this have a, a slight curve to it, and it's noticeable, especially when you have the ones that are called square. They're straight up and down. So this is a slant cut, curved side. Oh, sorry about that, folks. Technical difficulties, right? So be careful with that. Are there any other markings on it? All right, let's pull out a couple of rifles. Let me see if I can get. All right, so see how that's straight versus the other ones? But it also still has a curved side to it. They changed over on this gun right here, on this, this number, number nine. They also made a straight version of this where it goes top, top to bottom, um, top to bottom um, being a flat side. Talked about uh, slings, purchase dates and values and all that kind of stuff. Um, try to get this into focus here. Basically any marks you see, put it in there. I don't recommend, like say, taking off the, uh, the barrel band, especially if it's a solid, um, if it's a solid pin like this, uh, and doesn't look like it was ever out. Obviously if it, you know, if, if the handguard was out, go ahead, take it off. Just be very careful, slide it out to the front. Watch my videos on how to replace them so you don't break them. Um, they're very fragile, probably the most fragile part of the rifle. Uh, that's about it. So I'll post this up uh, pretty soon. Hopefully it'll help you out a little bit. I'm not here to do like technical inspections or talk about certain other things. It was just how to fill out the M1 Grand Data Sheet. Um, you should send it into the Grand Collectors Association. I've a, been a member for years. Um, if you have a good rifle, send them. They would love to have your data sheets on and pictures. Become a member. Not only is it great that you get a quarterly magazine out of it, full color, and it has great stories and write-ups in there. I have a few parts that were in there at one time. But you become eligible to purchase grands from the CMP, which is oh so important. And now they have the 1911s. Um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. So again, Norwich 93 CMP, look at my other videos and join the Grand Collectors Association. Take care.